Hold on one second. Hold on a moment right here. What's happening? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. That's hello. It. Hello. How's it going? Uh, it's going great. Uh, are we are we ready? What's going on? Is this gonna is this gonna actually happen? Oh, about that. I kind of have uh, some bad news. Oh Jesus! What? I have to reschedule. It's okay. You can. I'm having tech issues. I'm just kidding. I'm just. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Gosh, I can't. I can't even imagine how like stressed you probably looked. Okay, I, I was joking. It was a joke. All right, let's get started. I also have the link for you. Okay. All right, I'm starting it. My name is Lisa Reeves. Oh okay. shit, it's so loud. It is insanely loud. So before I can even, I want to talk to you. I want to make sure you do understand your rights, okay? And that way I can explain to you what's going on and all that good stuff. Do you understand? Okay. You understand yes. that? Okay. Today's date is May the third, two thousand and ten. The current time is. All right. Your first name is George. Yes. G E O R. It's a Christmas miracle that we have JCS reacts again. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I did it. There's no I'm sad that way. it's gonna end soon. Damn, they just. No way. Damn, they arrested the shit out of him. Trigger warning, this guy's voice is hella annoying. I don't know what that means. Why did you guys say, why did you guys come in and say you, you were searching for an assault? I never said anything about this. Someone, he did. You know, someone came in this way. I never mentioned to you anything. Just told you we're investigating something. We're investigating stuff. Do you want me to call anybody for you, George? It's an interesting concept to think of how you might respond to what would normally be an easy question, especially during a circumstance where it becomes a terrifying dilemma. We ask that you contemplate this question while you put yourself in George's position, but not before you grasp the context of what brought him to this moment. It begins with 22-year-old sports scholar Yardley Love, a star lacrosse player at the University of Virginia. She is captured in this photograph playing in the second-to-last game of the season, clearly aware of the obstacles that lie in front of her, yet continuing to move forward, which is the circumstantial detail that turned this picture into a symbol for the globally recognized organization that would be founded in her memory. This would be the last photograph taken that day, capturing Yardley's last embrace with her head coach Julie Myers. Both were unaware this exact moment would soon be on the national front pages. On May 3, 2010, at roughly 2.15 a.m., Yardley's roommate returned from a night out to their off-campus apartment. Upon entering, she saw that Yardley's bedroom had been broken into, at which point she rushed inside to find her unresponsive on the mattress. She had blood coming out of her nose and severe bruising across the right side of her face. But the most alarming thing was that she wasn't waking up. Her friend called 911, who instantly guided her through the steps of CPR, which was then taken over by paramedics who arrived on the scene four minutes later. But their attempts at revival were unsuccessful, and Yardley was pronounced dead at exactly 2.47 a.m. At 2.53 that same morning, criminal investigator Lisa Reeves woke up to a phone call from the sheriff's office. By 2.59 she had arrived at Yardley's apartment leading the investigation, and by 3.50 confirmed that she had her first person of interest, which was 22-year-old George Hughley V. Yardley's ex-boyfriend, and the next several hours were spent gathering information before she knocked at his front door. She found out that George was a fifth-generation heir to a very wealthy American family, whose roots lay in lumber dating back to the 1900s. He was educated at Landon Prep, a prestigious all-boys private school in Bethesda, Maryland, with annual tuition fees of up to $50,000. George was the star player of the lacrosse team and became an All-American athlete. This led to a full scholarship at the University of Virginia, where he remained a key player in the starting lineup, and where he would also meet, then spark a romance with fellow lacrosse player Yardley Love. They dated for almost two years. Hughley and Love's relationship was an on-again, off-again one, where they cheated on each other throughout, and that tempers flared both ways. What was going on with these two young people? What may have led someone to do what happened? These are just a completely unbelievable set of facts. Everybody watched the relationship. People were really troubled by it. They were scared for her. Nobody knew what to do. Yardley ended the relationship in 2010, just two weeks before graduation. Nine days later, she was found dead in her bedroom. And that same morning, George Hughley would hear a knock at his front door. 
He opened to Detective Lisa Reeves, who was dressed in civilian clothing. She introduced herself as a police officer, but mentioned nothing of the crime. She simply stated that she was conducting an investigation that could benefit from his presence at the sheriff's office. George's response was to lethargically put on his flip-flops, then walk over to the passenger side door of her unmarked police car, and let himself in. Somewhat bewildered, Lisa got in and drove them to the police station a few minutes away without talking. It was around then when she noticed bruises. Okay, I gotta pause it here and say first pause is five minutes in. I mean, five this is minutes, fine. Okay, four okay. minutes and fifty seven seconds. Okay, across the board, immediately like super rich kid. Like, I, I feel like it's a what you're seeing here is a sense of entitlement that is overwhelmingly powerful as a rich, rich lacrosse kid possibly doesn't even recognize that he could be implicated in this crime, or even if he is, doesn't care. Using on his knuckles and cuts on his forearm, at which point George was no longer a person of interest. He was the prime suspect. All right, all right, all right. Did you say you did want water, didn't you? I know I introduced myself to you at your house, but my name is Lisa Reeves. Today's date is May the 3rd, 2010. The current time is. I can't tell them that one. 7.52, okay? My trial is paper still. What's that? My trial is paper still right now. Yeah. All right, your first name is George? Yes. <laughs> Right away you'll come to notice that George is oblivious to the gravity of Important. the situation, and it would be very safe to assume that he no at this asked, moment though. is unaware that Yardley has died. He seems to believe that he's in as much trouble as he would be sitting in a principal's office, perhaps for getting in a fight at class or on the lacrosse field, and the sooner he provides a sanitized version of the truth, the sooner he'll get to go home. This of course ties in perfectly with the interrogator's opening strategy. <laughs> which we've labeled warmth for the sake of this video. She will downplay the severity of his situation to a considerable degree, while maintaining a friendly temperament with a sympathetic undertone. She needs the suspect to feel safe and secure for the time being, as the less cautious he is, the more information he's likely to give away. Then as soon as he locks himself into one particular storyline, the pressure can commence, which often leads to a suspect being laden with panic and contradictions. I'm gonna pause again and say that there ain't no way this dude was writing his own drama paper rich and spoiled kids like this always got some nerd that they're paying like uh, a couple a couple hundred dollars to write their paper for them okay no shot sorry before we ask you any questions you must understand your rights you have the right to remain silent anything you say can be used against you in court you stop right doing a pause counter questioning and have chat one present during questioning if you cannot oh your chat's lawyer, doing it too provided for you. what and if you're willing to talk to us now, you're going to start talking to you again. George has two options here. Option one is to remain silent, then allow his father to get him the most expensive attorneys in the country. He would then have <laughs> years to examine the evidence, evaluate the many options available, and then construct the most self-preserving storyline with world-renowned experts in criminal defense before they present it to a jury. Unfortunately for George, he takes option two. But before he does, rewatch the flawlessly reassuring manner in which he's given the final piece of the Miranda warning. And if you're willing to talk to us now, you have the right to stop talking any time. Okay, I gotta pause again. Pause counter three, I don't care. This <coughs> level of care and consideration from a police officer, a detective, to the prime suspect on a murder case is never afforded, okay? It is unimaginably considerate, and I assume it is because the person is is rich, okay? Straight up. Rich white dude, I've never seen it. Either this cop is literally, like, running for historically best cop of the year award for every fucking year, or this dude is just straight up, like, I mean, he's getting considerations, accommodations that I've never seen. Wait, Hassan. Awesome. What? Okay, this is, I'm, I'm gonna start pausing so I can respond to you. Okay. <laughs> But um, it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a tactic to get them to, you know, say certain things and trap them into a certain storyline. No, I, line, I, right? I understand that for sure. But ultimately, a big part of, like, uh, developing a case in many instances, uh, regardless of the warmth uh, that they're demonstrating, is by trying to get them to talk. And mm -hmm. oftentimes, like, cops will, you know, cops will do the, you know, oh, you can, you, we can get an attorney for you. But 
never the second part where it's like, oh, we're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be extra considerate and tell you, like, we can, we don't, we we don't have to talk to you if you say you need your lawyer. How many times have you and myself separately, independently, watched JCS videos where cops will literally? Be like, oh, yeah, you want a lawyer? Okay, no? All right, well, you know, you still should talk to us. You still should talk to us. You still should talk to us. I've seen so much rougher interrogation conditions, even if they are also being positive and warm towards the suspect. I've seen uh, infinitely, infinitely uh, uh, worse uh, structured interrogations where they just basically, like, the, the suspect will ask for a lawyer and they'll still continue asking questions, mm -hmm. you know? Anyway. White privilege. But maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. White Let's and watch. rich... Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Let's watch. Oh, sorry. For there? <laughs> do you okay, that rights? counts as a pause. No, it doesn't. And our will and fault is. <laughs> and Tom now is 7.53. All right. Let's kind of start. I'm going to kind of ask you some questions. And like I said, we'll explain things a little bit later. Um, tell me about your day yesterday. Play golf with um, our parents. It was a, a <laughs> father son. Oh, uh, good or bad. I went to dinner with my dad and my two buddies. And then, uh... Oh, God, this guy sounds like such a douche. <laughs> a oh, God, I hate him. I already hate him so much. He's talk to Yardley. And... Who's Yardley? Yardley is my former girlfriend. Okay. Which is holding out, which I understand. But... George has now what? initiated the investigative subject matter himself. It's the perfect opening scenario <laughs> for the interrogator because she's given nothing away, making it more likely for him to reveal details that will contradict the evidence. When I went over to talk to Yordi, I... He sounds like Blastoise. I, I can't unhear it. No, it's he like, doesn't. That's an insult to Blau. Like, he he sounds like this sometimes. We He's such a... Blau. No, no, this, this does not sound like Blau. Yes, like, Blau literally sounds like this sometimes. Where he's like, oh, I can't wait to hit the pow. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing, like his surfer boy North voice. Carolina the week before, which is what he just referred to. And she was already like, oh, like freaking out. Like, you know, you can't go me, you can't go me. And I was like, I'm like just trying to talk to you. The investigation team obviously had no way of knowing this, and George has now confessed to the crime of second-degree trespass. More importantly, however, he's just confessed to initiating the supposed confrontation. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? That he was he's like, I broke, in, and, I broke into my girlfriend, my dead girlfriend's house. And the critical fact he can actually recognize and remember this will be used against him repeatedly in the future. That's insane. And, like, she, like, started being, like, like, getting, like, all, like, you know, like, really, like, defensive. She was so I fucking like, killed her. It was yeah, crazy. Like, and, like, I was like, totally. I'm not here. Like, I'm just here to talk to you. And she like got all like, like sat up. Like, her bed's against the wall. Like if it was in this corner, she was like up against the wall. And I was like, like we were sitting there talking, and like she started being like, like you know, like. Getting, okay, we like, need a light all, counter. Like, aggressive okay it's a million already after this <laughs> and so i was like all right like chill out like and choke her a little bit so just to recount what george said over the last 47 seconds yardley was defensive while being in a defensive state she backed up against the wall she then became aggressive george's response to this supposed aggression was to initiate physical contact and she started being like like freaking out and i was like listen i'm not like here to do anything i'm here talking to you what the fuck why would you think that hmm. in the past week and and she was like and like sort of like being like no 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 like a hit in her head like st like stop like like she's in the corner i was sitting on the bed i was like stop like and i was like we were already like what the hell like we were just gonna talk so let's go back oh, half a I minute hate and dissect so what much. actually just happened there. And so I was like, all right, like, chill out, like, and choke her a little bit. He will now say the words, and she started being like, then simultaneously mimic a body colliding with the wall. He will then stop himself mid-thought and subtly modify the detail. And she started being like, like, freaking out, and I was like, listen. And she started being like, like freaking out. Oh, good catch! He goes from illustrating Yardley hitting the wall to, as he states, freaking out. And she he seems to realize mid-sentence this isn't the best way to explain her injuries, so he changes the detail to buy himself time. And she started being like, like freaking out, and I was like, listen, I'm not like here to do anything. I'm here to talk to you. 
He carefully shifts the topic from Yardley to himself, and keeps it there for eight seconds before attempting to re-explain what occurred in a more self-preserving manner. And she was like, and like, sort of like, being like, no, 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 like, like hitting her head, like... No jury on the planet will believe that Yardley was voluntarily slamming her head against the wall with enough force to cause fatal brain damage. All George has done mm -hmm. here is give away the fact that yeah. he knows Yardley has sustained some type of head injury and now lied on By the way, about a how brilliant, it was brilliant detective work just letting like, this idiot speak. Like, really I mean, actually. <laughs> and like, it was not at all like a good conversation because. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah? She was already like. Because, she, because I was she slamming her head against the she wall. She see me there. Okay. What happened next? What happened next? And she was, kept hitting her head against the against the wall while she was sitting on the bed. And I was like, I grabbed her and I like shook her. I was like, stop! Like we need to, like and looked at her. I was like, we need to like talk about this. And, like, I mean, I was on holding her arms and stuff, but like I I never struck her. I never like what? hit her hit her like in the face. What the? Why like, is he saying like, that? Talking. She was so like, she was so like, oh I mean, what's the word? Like you know like. Like, this mother. What is he saying? This mother has. He's insane. This is like levels of self-report that I have never seen before. He just straight up, like sometimes we'll watch a a psychopath get interviewed by a detective and interrogated by a detective, and I mean an interview because they want the detective to know what they did. They're proud of it. This guy is just so profoundly stupid that he basically said he did the murder and then thought he could get away with it by saying i just like thought the visor off and i definitely didn't do the murder <laughs> insane incredible also one other thing i was gonna say is this motherfucker's never written an essay in general he can't even craft three sentences together without tagging on like 18 likes <laughs> he doesn't know she's dead i mean it doesn't matter i'm saying like he, he basically is like self-reporting oh, that an assault that he he assaulted his ex-girlfriend he said former girlfriend doesn't matter that he's not aware that she's dead what matters is that he's aware that he's being called into questioning because of an assault charge most likely okay if well if he, he if he doesn't know that she's dead like is she having a seizure is that why she's like because the way he's just he's like describing her as like hitting her head against the wall herself and flopping like he was making like the arm movements yeah i I don't know if he knows she's dead or or like the medical yeah, examiner you, they has declared that? her dead or, or not. I don't think she. I don't think the detective has said anything. Yet. No, she. The detective has said nothing so far. <laughs> so I don't think she yeah, said. Yeah, he's kind of doing all the work. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean he, he's carrying the burden here because, like I said, profoundly privileged. And most likely has never been in any real trouble. Or if he got into trouble at school or whatever, his parents have probably been able to get him out of it. So he doesn't understand the consequences of his actions right now. A fish out of the water, like, like, so, like, all this. And I was like, listen, like, I'm not here to, like, fight with you or, like, do anything. Like, I'm here to talk to you. And, like, and she's like, no, 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 like, get away from me. Oh, my leave. Leave. gosh. You have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave. <laughs> like, all this stuff. And I was like, all right, like, fine, like, but like, I want to talk to you after all this, and and like I was, I was like a little. Yeah, the detective is applying a technique called "let him cook." You know, my <laughs> former girlfriend who, who something happened last week. You know, and I was like, all right, like, well, so we were like talking over there, and I mean, I somehow we ended up somehow I was resting her on the floor, and I was just like, stop! I just like. And I was holding her. I was holding her. I was a little bit persistent. I was wrestling her on the floor. All further evidence that designates George as the aggressor. He's completely shut down his ability to argue any sort of self-defense claim. And then the conversation I could tell was just like, it was not going anywhere and nothing was happening. And uh, she like went back to bed and I, and I laughed. Right. And I went back home. Phase one is now complete. 
The suspect has unknowingly locked himself into a storyline that will put him away for a very long time. He's phasing up the right now. The risk of him shutting down or requesting a lawyer is no longer a primary concern. So the interrogator will now increase the pressure. She will confront him on certain elements that she pretended to overlook before. And the ideal scenario is to cause just enough panic so that he backpedals on previous statements and contradicts himself. All right, so you go over there. Knock on the door. Her front door's open. Mm -hmm. Her room door was closed. I knocked, like, like are they, like, she heard me open the door and, and went in. All right. Went in where? To her room. All right, straight to her bedroom? Straight to her bedroom, yeah, I mean. How'd you get through the door? Her door or the mm -hmm. front door? Her door. Actually, it might have been locked. Mm-hmm. It was. What? Oh. God. What the fuck? Yeah, what? <laughs> Why? Actually, what is he doing? He's being honest, yeah, no, yeah, well, He's being honest I guess. Because I think I put a hole. Yeah. You punched door. a hole through the door. Pretty sure, actually, now. Yeah, that you said that, yeah. What? Sure. Why would you do that? Yeah, why? Well, I, I guess, yeah, when I, once I was in her room, she was, like, very, like, you know, like, hardly, like, I don't want to talk to you. Like, da -da and she was very like you your know, honor the vibes were like, permanently I wonder, fucked i wonder I why she was on edge talk, like, uh, you know <laughs> your honor you don't know, understand like, i needed to fucking resuscitate the vibes like i just wanted bad. to talk you know, why'd you push into it then? A very unusual time to interrupt a suspect in such a contentious manner. He was giving away self-incriminating information that could yeah, be used to establish Yeah, the second detective sucks. He was doing exactly what the lead investigator wanted. But Detective Ed has now stopped him in his tracks. It's a reckless maneuver at this point in the interrogation, oof. which Detective yeah. Reeves is no doubt Big conveying oof. at this moment through nonverbal communication. She now has to <laughs> let the suspect... <laughs> They're doing JCS reacts is so good. They're so good that they're doing reacts on the detectives like uh it, it, the detective's body language too. But it, he's right. They're right. They've done so many of these that they're just like they're professionals at this point. Uh, they, and, the other and, detective looks so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. No, a typical man just fucking barging in on the convo and and wanting to have his voice be heard. You know, pausing the conversation. You could say. Anyway, <laughs> respond as to not undermine their position. <laughs> because I want to talk to her. Detective Reeves will now bring his guard back down through a reassuring tone and gently guide his train of thought back to his grievances with the victim. She pulls this off in three questions. All right, we'll continue on. That's fine. Continue on. So you're, you're talking to her and she doesn't want to talk to you? Not really. I mean, and, and we talked, though. We, like, there was parts where we were talking and then, like... Do you know what you're talking about? I mean, about so many different things. Okay. Like what? Like, like what she did last week. Mm hmm Like, went to, like, Carolina. She went to Carolina and hooked up with someone Sunday when we were still trying to figure out things. And I was over there, like... Like to talk, like I was like, this is like. This he is even gave the motive. That's insane. I was mm -hmm. He's better. like, that's and like my motive. Then, like, <laughs> you know, Your Honor, she, she cheated on me. Fast. The so, vibes yeah, were fucked. Knew, like how upset I was because I've told her like through emails, like how upset I was like about what she did, and so I was like, and I sat on the edge of it. I was like, listen, like I want to talk to you, like like what you did was bullshit. Like that was that's not like okay. And I was just like, I, like, and and she's like, oh, like, not like, like, you know, she's like, uh, like, you know, sort of pushing everything that she did to the back burner and like talking about like, like, you know, like, like trying to like put everything that she did like wasn't important. It kept going to the point where she, like, I was like, listen, like, you're the, like, we have to figure, like, out what's going on. And she was like, I'm not, I'm not, talk, I'm not talking to you. And then she, like, pushed me, like, get out of here. Like, like, go. And I was like, no. And, like, I was like, be like, we have to talk. Like, so, like, get, like. When you're, when you're doing that, what, what are you holding on her? On her <gasps> arms. On her arms, like, maybe up here? Like, shoulders, yeah. Shoulders. Like, like, like. like, like like come on like you know and see that's when she was like wiggle and like, like get away and like you know like hide in the get in the corner like really like what the fuck? like defensively almost. even his like 
the way he's describing it, like he would still get punishment for assault at this point. This is the not going anywhere. How'd she get back in bed? Uh, we were like wrestling and we stood up and I, I tossed her, I pushed her onto the bed. I was like, good. Tossed her like, onto the bed. Did you touch her neck area at all? Did you choke her at one point? Um, oh my I god. May have grabbed her. Oh my god. Oh, come, we oh, dude. Like, but I never, like, strangled her. Okay. Um, okay. but I, yeah, I mean, during the whole, like, commotion, you know, like, I, you may have, I might have grabbed her neck, but I never, was, there, never was, like, strangling her. Okay. More detail that was unknown to the investigation. The fact that he grabbed her neck can now be used as evidence. It paints a more frightening picture of the incident with relation to the suspect's he aggression He is going to super jail. This was an oh extremely damaging revelation super for George's jail. defense. <laughs> the discussion moves to the moment he left, and George admits that he took Yardley's laptop. Why'd you grab her laptop? What? Because I was so pissed that she wouldn't talk to me. I was like, I don't know. I like took it almost as like collateral, I guess. I don't know. It's it's not his dad's lumber yard did not produce but, enough wood to get this guy out of jail. Mm -hmm. I can I tell know. you that. Did you take anything else? There's no shot. Nothing. No. Okay. He stole her mm -hmm. laptop? What so the when, uh, when you left out of there, I mean you saw that she was bleeding on her nose. She's now about to ask a question with the same implication for a second time. Notice what occurred the first time. Did you go back and check on her at any point? No, I did not. Okay. Did, did you try to call rescue or anything, make sure she's alright? No, I did not. No. Why? Uh -uh. The face of bewilderment, if there ever was one. It's very strange <laughs> that he's so taken aback by such Caught a question. Caught in 4P. Especially when you take into account the possible <laughs> outcome if he had actually called for help. One medical expert revealed in the courtroom for the very first time that following Yardley Love's brutal beating, had George Hughley or anyone else called for help, she might have survived. Uh, I didn't think it was like, in, I didn't think that she was like in need of like going to the emergency room. I, we, she just got, I made it a play. What do you think that? I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't, did you say when you were, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you were shaking her, her head was hitting the wall? Well, that was in the beginning. That was in, initially when I walked in, like she was like up in the corner, like saying, get, like, get out of here. Like, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. At, at any time when you were shaking her, did her head bang the, the wall? Put yourself in George's position and imagine Yardley had in fact self-inflicted her injuries. You would perhaps say something along the lines of, absolutely not. I wasn't hitting her against the wall, but like... Dude, she, what like, the fuck? There in the corner mm -hmm. of like, if it were like... Oh, like no, no, oh no, my... No. Like, Wait. Know, and I, this guy's like, so stupid. Like, maybe he like, literally did not realize out, that she like, was actually in need of, you, like, do that, you know, like, emergency yeah. help. Like, this guy's move, pretty like, dumb. Would, like, you know, like, like he never, what are you like doing, like, like that? Like, okay. she she has a pretty good knot on her head. That's why I'm asking how uh, that how how you can explain how that would have happened. I mean, I don't even know when that a knot. Mm -hmm. I mean. Like on, on the side of her head, she's been hit pretty good right there. So I'm just trying to figure out, did you hit her with something? No. Was that no, her I never, I never, never touched her or struck her or anything. Well, you touched her. You had your hands on you know, her. Yeah, no, I, I said never struck her. Okay. So you, you, oh my I'll look this one more time, make sure we're on the same page. So you're, you're pretty pissed at her from a week ago for sending you text messages. Do you have those text messages where she says she, uh, as you put it, fucked somebody? I actually might have those, yeah. Alright, you got your phone with you? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's pull it out and throw it Let's see if we can see those. He the thinks this is, is... fascinating because it symbolizes... He thinks he's uh, pulling this out because he thinks this is going to help him. Like, probably. I, I assume he thinks like, oh, well, you know, like, obviously that's why I went over to confront her and like was shaking her, you know what I mean? Like, but me meanwhile, she's like establishing motive. I think he thinks... Oh, Sorry, go ahead. What did you say? You think I think he, he thinks that like saying like, oh, she cheated last week is like justifiable in his actions. Yeah, no, that's. I think he doesn't realize he's in trouble. That's how dumb this man is. Yeah, exactly. Change. Mm. 
that the that second pause doesn't count. Yeah, that counts. That's two extra pauses. No, I was doing it. It was a courtesy pause. Soon after that, she will take the phone out of his hand and place it on the table. Actions that would be completely unacceptable in almost any other circumstance. Actions that would be completely unacceptable in almost any other circumstance. There were, there were like, I guess what you call like a, like a, an ongoing <laughs> conversation, ongoing like it's a message and it's gone. Okay. That's okay. crazy. All right. Let's talk about how you, you entered. Entered. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Because to put your, to have put your fist through the door. No, I, it's actually my leg. I'm pretty your sure. Your leg? Because that's why my leg's like this. Yeah, you're right. That was your leg. Yeah. How'd you get all the bruising on your hand then? This is all from lacrosse. This is all. That's this pretty is, fresh right there, it looks. This is all from my lacrosse game on Saturday. On Saturday. I mean, I Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Saturday. Fuck. Right Stop. Even right there, I thought you, you wore those padded gloves. This is lacrosse. all. This is all the difference. This is all from lacrosse. And that's. I got whacked here. I remember, hundred percent. Got whacked during the game. Yeah. This is. This like, is. You're going to jail off. if you're relaxed, bro. When when you had her and you're shaking, did she scratch you anywhere? No. 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 She's a little girl. She's tiny. Yeah. She did not. No. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't try me. to get you or anything like that. No. Oh my god, he so has no out. He literally, door. she's giving him yeah, an out. That's, the, that, that, that's how I got to, yeah. Okay. And then I stuck my hand through and unlocked it and went in there. Oh, that's scary. Okay. Everything else is for you. The detectives leave the room for roughly three minutes. When they return, it appears Ed is given the chance to lead with a few of his own questions. I, I know we, we touched about what, uh, what happened last night. This guy's gonna suck. <laughs> <laughs> Set it up for me. Leave it up to me a little bit here. Why did you guys break up exactly? Why? Why? Yeah. Well, we are not. We are not from the same area. Right. Oh, okay. And <laughs> I'm going, or she wants me to New York, and I'm not exactly sure where, what I'm doing yet. But I'd like to move to San Francisco. Why'd you take her computer? I don't know. I have no idea. There's maybe maybe because there's evidence on the computer emails that you sent. No, there's no. I mean, you you can find. Oh, oh that's all terrible. The and everything back and forth. Detective Ed now asks George if he's Dumbass. hardly down on the bed. He's trying to subtly set the grounds for an argument of smothering, which isn't a terrible idea, but would be disproven by the autopsy regardless. No, no. Did you fall down on top of her? You know, rest on the ground? wrestling on the ground for like a little Did bit. Did you wrestle on the bed at all? No, I never like, no. Never like, I mean, I shove her. No, I mean like, just kind of hold her down until she calmed down on the bed. No, if anything that would, I mean, I mean, if, he, any, if anything that would feel like, He's cutting floor, him off too. He sucks. When her yeah. knees start bleeding, we're like wrestling around. It's got the same amount of head injuries that our boy has here. No, I mean, she's screaming. No, 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 she was no, no, she was not screaming actually. I mean, if I'm cracking, kind of, if I'm cracking my head in the like, wall, I'm gonna be saying, "Oh yeah, yeah." No, I mean, she was not screaming. Yeah, she should have been. Probably, I mean, what? maybe. What? She should have been. What? Probably, I mean, maybe. I don't Even know. she. I don't know. I mean, well, she was screaming when I first like came into the room. She was like, "No, like I'm not talking to you. Like, get the fuck out of here, all that." But like, at any point before you said you you and this was your words. You said you tossed her on the bed and then you left. Yeah. All right. At any point before that, did she lose consciousness? No. Okay. What happened after you tossed her on the bed? Did she move? Did she talk about to say something? I mean, I literally tossed her on the bed and turned around and... Tossed her on the ground or tossed her on the bed? On the bed. I walked bed. out the door. Okay. So when you tossed her back on the bed, in, in your mind, she's... She was um, bleeding? But you said she was bleeding out her nose and, and you didn't you didn't feel like you needed to call rescue? No. After that? After banging her head and... No, she, I, Shaking I, her, I, blood coming out her nose on the floor. No. There's nothing about, Have like... A, you missed anything that I want to ask him right now? There's nothing about, like, going going to get anything or going, you know. I don't know why I took a computer. 
George rambles about why there was no reason for taking the laptop for another 20 seconds, during which time Detective Reeves decides that enough information has been attained. Phase 2 is now complete, and the fate of Yardley is about to be revealed. These moments in interrogations are considered important for the purpose of gauging a suspect's response. It's believed that a sharp and sudden revelation can make it difficult to fabricate emotion. So in theory, this will cause a suspect to provide either a genuine response or a relatively obvious disingenuous response, which often comes in the pretense of shock or remorse. I mean, I guess that's where my logic was at, but that was, which is... Well, I have to tell you I something. I think I know why you took the computer. In the midst of what would have been a flawlessly executed moment, Detective oh God, Ed jumps Ed. back into the laptop mystery. The suspect has essentially confessed to murder. This really wasn't the time for regurgitated conjecture over a petty theft misdemeanor, which Ed was clearly being advised of once again through nonverbal communication. This wow. is insane. She's dead. <laughs> Killed George. Throw Ed in jail too, honestly. She's dead. I think you knew that already. No, I did not. In our opinion, George is being truthful here, and yeah. we believe the interrogator feels the same way in this moment. I don't think I don't think he fucking. I don't think he knew. Yeah, he's yeah. so fucking stupid. I think he's being truthful. How yeah. Because you killed her, George. How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her. George appears to be going through a delayed response. It's so foreign a revelation that it's yet to sink in. Once the shock settles, he refuses to accept it, and this denial appears to be a momentary coping mechanism before the reality of the situation truly hits him, which will happen at this time in the footage. She's dead? Yes. She's dead? Yes. She's dead? She's dead. How? How? I already told you how. You already told us how as well. How is she dead? You just told us. Oh my god. Bro, you slammed her head against the fucking wall. Like, yeah, that's how. That's how she's dead. What an idiot. You went in there to talk with her, but it got out of control, right, George? The detectives will now add further pressure to keep him talking. See, Suspects will often divulge information in these moments in the panicked attempt to save themselves. And in doing so can They're trying to do good cop, bad cop, but it's literally like good cop, bad cop, Rock skill wise. You <laughs> kicked in her door. She started to fight with you. You punched her in the head or you cracked She's not dead. You cracked She's her head. Dead. You cracked She's her head dead. in the window or in the in the She's wall. Not she is. She's not dead. I ain't BSing you right now, it's serious. I wanna see I wanna see her. She's George, wait. Uh, George. She is dead. You were not here to dance with us. You're, you're here because she's dead. The alcohol? I dude? don't believe it. I don't believe it's it. true. I, dude, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I did it. I, I don't believe that she's dead. How did you, how did, how I did don't you, believe that she's dead. How I she, don't believe that she's did, dead. Did you punch her? Did you hit her? How? She's, there's no way she's dead. There's, she's not dead. I didn't, I never did anything. I didn't, I didn't, I did not, I did not. All right, let's, let's calm down. I did not, like, hurt her. Like, she's, she's not dead. Let's calm down. Just out of protocol, what we gotta do is stand up for me, George. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Turn around. Relax. It's okay. Relax. You'll be alright. You cannot relax when you're handcuffed, no, okay? That's no, fucking bullshit. Dead, Please. Will you tell me she's not dead? Relax. Please. Will you tell me you she's not dead? You know what? I wish I could tell you that, George. 22 year old. 22. And her life is done. She's not. I can't. Oh, not it's so do sad. Like that. Oh, my God. No way, there's no way, there's no way. I do not believe it. I do not believe Also, it. classic cop moment. Let's calm him down by handcuffing him. There's no way, there's no way she could be dead. Either, either the head trauma or asphyxiation. It, it, there was no asphyxiation. Okay. Oh my god. Oh he doesn't god. notice, he doesn't deny the head trauma. Yeah. Okay, not, what was she doing the last time you saw her? She was like... She was like standing up with me. She was standing up with me. She was standing up with me, looking at me. Was she standing or holding you? She were was her standing up? up, looking at me. Okay. She's not Aww. dead. I know she's not dead. I know. Oh, hundred million reasons she's not dead. I did. You cannot be dead. I know. 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 I
It did not. It didn't. It didn't. And she's like, no, 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 like, get away from me. You have to leave. You have to leave. You have to leave. You have to leave. You have to... I was like a little bit persistent. Was green. she screaming? She should have been. I didn't kill her and leave. I didn't just. Oh my god. I didn't kill her. I did not kill her. I did not kill her. I did not. I did not. There's no way I can't do it. No way. No way. I want a lawyer. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. <sighs> no, there's no way. There's no way. There's no fucking way. So, we're, 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 should I talk to someone? Who do you want to talk to? Anyone. A lawyer. <laughs> one will get appointed to you. Okay, what do I do now? Go to jail? Yeah. What? All right, George, right now, I know you're, you, you, no, no one want to talk to us, that's fine, I'm just letting you know something. We're working on a search warrant right now, and what it is, is we're going to have to collect some stuff from you, like what's called a buckle swab, okay? She wasn't screaming because she was dead? No, uh, she wasn't dead, actually. Like, that's kind of an important part of this, is that why if he had called 911, she would have survived. For an assault. I never said anything about an assault. Someone cheated. Someone cheated. She could have been saved, but she I probably was like so severely concussed and having internal bleeding. Do you want me calling anybody for you, George? From the head trauma. At the start Hassan. of this video, you were asked what? to think of what you would do in this. Just, just pause. Just pause the video. Situation. Oh, now you, you just, try and imagine what would be going Just pause it. Now, now you want me to pause it. You just don't want to rack up your pause counter. And be honest. Just pause it. Okay, well, you paused it last time. That was a year. <laughs> you paused it, and then I accidentally unpaused it. So that was you. You paused well, it. Well, because I can't, I can't hear, and also I can't hear you either. And just pause it if you want to say something. Just pause it. Okay. Well. All right. And also, every time you talk, that's an extra pause for your. That's great. Okay, we're just making like rules up as we go along. <laughs> that's bullshit. Um. Anyway, we're gonna rewind ten seconds. Mm -hmm. And what were you saying? And um, I don't even remember what I was saying, so <laughs> it doesn't even matter because you just kind of cut me off there a little bit. It's fine, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for interrupting you. No, it, it's okay. Uh, but yes, no, I. <laughs> I do, I do like pausing, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, just anything. Just As you might just gain a restorative outlook from both knowing the answer while not having to answer this particular question. But there is of course no possible way you will gain anything close to the newfound perspective George has acquired in this moment, which unfortunately for him is no longer of use. Want me to call your dad? This is, we call mom. Your mom? Don't you like me to call? I don't know about that. What's your mom's name? Oh my god. What's her number? 301 Okay. How? Did you want me to call your dad? Or just her? She will tell her. Mm -hmm. She can tell her everything. Okay. How? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. How is she? There's no way she can be dead. There's no way. Oh, no. There's no I, way. There's no I way. legit believe. So I believe it. Stupid. Like I think he's just a fucking idiot. I mean, he's abusive. He's a murderer. And I legitimately believe that he did not think he murdered her in yeah, the, in the, I, until I think this he's moment. So stupid. He is insanely dumb. These next few moments are a turning point. The leg iron seemed to initiate a shift in his constitution, and his denial will completely cease from this point forward. He will continue to ask why and how, but he will no longer reject the severity of what is happening. Maybe don't break into someone's house and keep trying to talk to them when they say no. Yeah, I mean. Or shake them. Or, or fucking slam their head against the wall. Yeah, that too. Another thing that I was thinking of is like, 
he might have even done this. He might have been abusive like this in the past as well, which is part mm -hmm. of the reason why he was like so surprised that this I time he ended life. up killing her. You know what I mean? Yeah. In this room? No, in jail. I don't know. Because like, there's no way you just like pop off one oh, time God, and start God, fucking. Yeah. Never said you were, but. <laughs> That's someone who is comfortable uh, being abusive with their mom. partner. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Call my mom. No, I guess. Yeah, you do want to talk to her. And that was when you need your family the most, but. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> 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 Also, wild. I I don't feel like. Oh, I was gonna say I feel like he has no remorse, but oh, I guess he does. Taken to the regional jail soon that was after so this sad. moment, he would go on to plead not guilty to murder and was held without bond for almost two years awaiting trial. It began on February 6, 2012. Well, testimony is now underway in the murder trial of the former UVA lacrosse player accused of killing his ex-girlfriend. For the first time. I'm gonna pause again. You know. They never use fucking bad photos in these situations too. Like they always use like a like a good photo, like a vanity photo at, when it's like when it's like a rich kid like this. You know what I mean? Always. Mm -hmm. We have video of Hughley as he was led into the courtroom. Contrary to his appearance in the days that followed his arrest for the murder of 22-year-old Yardley Love, he appeared pale, frail, and gaunt. The prosecution presented a case that Hughley went to Love's apartment that night, busted through her bedroom door, and in some way struck her, causing blunt force trauma, which led to her death. We've also learned that on that night, George Hughley was exchanging what were described as playful text messages with three other women. Those messages continued... Oh to the night and even after the alleged attack. Throughout this trial, Hughley has sat expressionless, Ew. almost stoic at the defense table. All of that And this motherfucker was like already trying to move on and oh my god, bro. Okay, listen. Listen. Well, they were both cheating on each other. Like, okay, he, I he mean, he literally acted on his emotions and it's like big baby when he doesn't get his way, but he's such a I know, but, so but mad. you don't just Abusive relationships develop over the course of a long period of time, oftentimes, and it ends up piling on top of one another. It's like here and there. First, it's yelling. Maybe the first time you establish physical contact is like, uh, uh, you know, an escalation, right? You don't go from zero to 100, which is why I said originally, which is why I said originally that he definitely must have uh, been popping off on her. Um, he was so callous. I would say when describing like literally just domestic abuse and assault before mm -hmm. he found out that she was dead, which means that like he has a level of familiarity with said assault. He has a level of comfort with like both describing the assault and also uh, engaging in it. So I'm, I'm fairly certain that this is probably a routine offense, which is why he was so shocked as well, because he's like, oh, well, it didn't happen the prior times before. that I fucking hit her. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that that is that is my suspicion i think you're right my <coughs> second suspicion is that he will get <coughs> he will get like affluenza style lighter charges than you normally would in this circumstance that changed today as this police interview was airing hughley began crying was often pinching the bridge of his nose with his hands and looking down as he listened to the sound of his own hysterical voice i did not kill her i did not kill her i did not i did not in court tuesday hughley's defense faced an uphill climb the most riveting testimony came from former unc lacrosse player michael burns who testified that one time while visiting uva he heard some yelling for help from hughley's apartment when he opened the door he said he found Hughley with his arm wrapped around there Love's it is. neck, choking her. Hughley then let her go, there it is. and she ran out of the room, crying. A variety of medical experts took the stand this Wednesday, and they all seemed to agree that Love's death was the result of blunt force trauma to the head. This was followed by highly distressing witness testimony from Yardley's neighbors. The noise was so loud, this was such a violent death that they heard it downstairs. Oh my god, that's Kimberly Guilfoyle. What the fuck? That's crazy. Sorry, that's... uh. California Governor Gavin Newsom's wife that uh, is now uh, married to Donald Trump Jr. Sorry. That's crazy. That's unrelated Let's add two to everything. pauses plus two pauses for okay, that. Well, I mean, we're, I'm running out the clock because like it's already 
we got like three minutes left. You know what I mean? And mm. also on top of that, you don't have to hear this part because, you know, viewers at YouTube don't experience this, but it's the top of the hour. So I'm going to run a six, uh, three minute ad break. Oh, uh, we can't relate. Yeah. <laughs> no, we can keep going through it because if they no, want no, an no. uninterrupted broadcast experience, all they need to do is subscribe, which they could do for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime, or by getting gifted a sub. Here's the three minute ad break now. And it sounded like a stereo crashing Wait, to the that's ground. That's messed it up. Didn't that the jury. You can't play the video while half your audience is watching ads. It's not half my audience. Luckily, most of my audience is subscribed already. So. We, we should wait for them. Okay. That's crazy. There's only two minutes. Ting, thank you for the five gifted subs. Yes, yeah, there's more people who are subscribed to my audience than not, and they're mad now that uh, we are not continuing with the. With oh, the, okay, okay. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. We All we right. gotta cater to the the payers. Yeah, exactly. Jury knew that she was alive for two hours before she died, indicating that if George Hughley had come to his senses, he could have gone back there, called 911, and possibly saved her life. Still, the driving argument for the defense is that George Hughley never intended to kill. They say this was all a tragic accident that he does yeah, not. Yeah, he intended the bruise. A life you know, sentence, but instead, fuck her up a little a bit. Not kill. Come on. A second chance. Guilty of second degree murder. And Thank you, you Dean Beamy, for the five minutes. A 26 year prison. Prison term came down. George Hughley was brought to court to hear what his lawyers idiot. plead for the judge to cut in half the 26 year sentence recommended by the jury. Judge Edward Hogshire did trim it back, but by just three years. The jury in this case recommended 26 years. The judge changed it to 23. Probably a small difference, but but why would he do that? It's surprising, isn't it? Yeah. Considering this why is would a woman he do who that? Beaten to death in her own bed. We think that George was convicted of a crime inconsistent with the facts. And he received a penalty inconsistent with what the evidence would require. There are no winners uh, in this case. With credit for the time that George Hughley has already served in jail, and if he gets time off for good behavior, he could be out in 18 years. And the family for Yardley Love has put out this statement saying, We find no joy in other sorrow. We are relieved to put this chapter behind us. Uh, As that for George, is... he was incarcerated at the Maximum Security Augusta Correctional Center for 10 years, and has since been transferred to a prison work camp in Richmond, where he's expected to serve out the rest of his sentence. The present consensus in the media Fucking, is that he, he got sent to the no gulag. intention of killing Yardley, but that his 23-year sentence is still appropriate, if not lenient, and that him being drunk to any degree at the time of the murder is not an excuse, nor does it lessen the culpability of his actions to any extent. He'll be released at the age of 45, meaning he will have the second chance at life Yardley was never afforded. You can decide for yourself whether he deserves it or not. Uh, a comforting prospect to this tragedy yeah. is the non I mean, he got hit with a, 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 a decent love foundation penalty, which is surprising. Messages, both on social psychology and preventative education. I did not think that Their he would get... will be linked in the description of this video. I, I, thought, I thought he would get less than that. I thought he would get less than that. Um, there have been instances of like sexual assault, especially where like a, a, a person of that background will end up, you know, having their sentence removed dramatically, reduced dramatically, um, for sure. Also, uh, Ray Carl is in the <clears throat> building right now. Carl Jacobs Hello, is here. Hello, Carl. Hi, Ray. It's me, Carl. Can you hear me? Wait, is that Carl? It's me, Ray. Carl, is that you? It's Hi, me, Carl. Ray. It's me, Carl. Carl, I see you out in the hallway every day when I walk past that iPad on the wall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that Ray's rich because the house that she lives at has a bunch of iPads all over the walls. I all right, goodbye, iPads. Carl. Yeah, exactly. I have iPads on my walls. <laughs> exactly. uh, that's yeah, you awkward. Heard me. <laughs> you heard me. No, no, no. So I just took a picture with one and then had that wallpaper now. Yeah, it's it's quite lovely. All yeah, right, have fun it. playing playing uh it takes two. Uh everybody, thank you uh to Valgare for uh duo queuing this uh react with us. You know? Yeah, uh, this surely was... there'll be another one soon, right? Yeah, yeah. And also uh, you know, go bother her about uh doing poppy playtime. What do oh. you mean? We I'm down to, to do it. Which we were supposed to do. When? We're supposed to do it eventually. Okay, yeah, you tell me when.
Okay. Toodaloo. All right. All right bye. bye. Have a good bye. stream. Goodbye. Bye. Thank God the girls are gone. Am I right? Dude, Dude. I've been saying. Boys, boys rule. Boys, 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 boys. boys. That's what I'm talking about, dude. That's what I'm freaking talking about. Okay. Also, a uh, big shout out to JCS. They done did it again. The boys over at JCS. Jim can't swim. Holy shit. What an incredible fucking video overall. <coughs> um, nobody George, does it. Nobody does it like they do. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>